Hi, I'm Celine Morin and welcome. This is video four of five as part of a bite-sized Wellspiration tips. So today, Thursday, I wanted to take a look at two very important things for your well-being, especially your physical well-being. So we've taken a look on the previous days at mental well-being and emotional well-being. But how do you look after your body? Well, this body is meant to move. So there's two things. We need to move and we need to do the opposite of movement. We need to stay still and get deep rest and sleep well, especially during very stressful times. So movement, we know exercise is important. One of the benefits of remote working is I've seen a lot with clients and friends and family members that a lot of us are doing more exercise than usual because we're managing to find the time to walk or to perhaps do online video or dance classes and exercise and high intensity interval training. So if you're doing that, good for you. However, what's happening the rest of your day when you're sitting behind your laptop or perhaps doing work? If you're sitting a lot, either on a chair behind a screen or perhaps on the sofa in front of another screen, it is so important to move and stretch if you want to keep your energy levels up and if you want to avoid compromising your posture and perhaps creating tension in your neck and your shoulders and your back. So ideally, you want to be doing one hour, if you can, of walking and intentional exercise and make it fun. I've been enjoying dancing for half an hour and then brisk walking or jumping on my mini, I've got a mini trampoline. By the way, that's another way to make exercise fun is to have little tools that can act as reminders like stretch bands or a skipping rope or a mini trampoline for instance. So ideally for an hour on most days of the week, get your body moving. Then every hour you should get up and stretch, even if it is just for a minute. Otherwise, you end up compromising on your posture, potentially not breathing correctly, creating tension and getting headaches and back pain. So get up and move around. It'll help your brain chemistry enormously and boost your metabolism. Now, movement is important. Exercise, so is stretching. But what's also important is stillness. So starting our day off with some kind of exercise is a great way to get endorphins in your brain and dopamine and feel good. However, at the end of the day, you don't want to be doing too much strenuous exercise. You might want to do a little bit of stretching, like yoga, Pilates, and there's so many online resources now that are some, some of them freely avail available. Sleeping is important because we need to disconnect to be able to connect. It can be very difficult to get deep sleep when we're quite stressed. And so the time leading up to going to bed is incredibly important. Try not to be on social media platforms or engaging with screens for an hour or two before you plan to get to sleep. This is partly because of the impact that the light has on melatonin, which is a hormone in your brain that makes you feel drowsy and ensures that you get good sleep. But it's also just all the information and the stimulation. Our brains at the moment are not getting enough chance to switch off. So on Monday, the first video I spoke about mindfulness, and this is a good time to bring in some mindfulness at the end of your day. So perhaps sit, even if it is in bed, for five or 10 minutes, use a guided meditation on YouTube or one of the lovely apps that are available, such as Insight Timer or Headspace or Calm, or simply bring your awareness to your breath and take deep, slow breaths for five or 10 minutes. That can be a powerful way to help your body and your mind be able to shut down and give you the much needed rest and sleep that you need. Take care and see you tomorrow for Friday Foodie.